All right, so I'm Carl from a uh, Belgium-based usability and information architecture company, AG Consult. I founded it in 2001, I love those things. Um, I mean, we do have some clients, but unfortunately, most of them, they don't want me to talk about their cases. But luckily, some do. That allows me to tell you how we, based on user research, try to create better A-B tests or better hypotheses. I guess everybody knows what A-B testing is. Yes, if not, one minute explanation. If you have a web page or a website, hopefully you have some visitors, otherwise it will be <laughs> not a very good idea. And probably you will also have a goal with your website and the number of people reaching that goal, that's called your conversion rate. With A-B testing, you make a variation of your page, can be completely different, can be a change of color of a button, but I don't like those simple tests. Some people are directed to version A, other people to version B, and after a while you know if your version is a winner or a loser. The software for creating A-B tests like Visual Website Optimizer or Optimizely has become very easy to use. That's good, but I don't like it. <laughs> Because a lot of people now think, when, ah, I can use the tool, I'm good at creating a B test. No, it's not because you own a typewriter that you will be, become the next best-selling author. There are a lot of stupid A B tests. <sighs> Let's change the color of the button. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't, and most of the time it won't make a big difference. Also, please do not test every ID that pops up in your head because most of your IDs will be <laughs> kind of not very bright IDs. <laughs> and then you will do a lot of A-B testing and will, you will be disappointed after a while. Also, make sure that you measure the right goal. A lot of A-B tests, when you start doing A-B testing, you just measure the click-through rate. But if you have a web shop and you say, hey, today everything is free, there will be a lot of clicks on that button. But if at the end of your web shop you add a one million slotty delivery cost, your conversion rate will drop. So you have to look at the conversion at the end of the funnel. And it's not because you've seen a test somewhere that you should just blindly copy it on your website. Because every website is different. The context is different. The audience is different. The design is different. Just don't be a copycat. <laughs> yeah, copycat. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of thinking about this one. <laughs> and please know why you're doing an A-B test. And when you're A-B testing, it's very important that you have a solid hypothesis. This one I stole from Michael Argaard, who is uh, at Content Verf on Twitter, a uh, pretty good conversion specialist. All right. User research tools, how you can use them to make your A-B tests better. There are different tools you can use. You can do, um, use Google Analytics, user testing, with or without eye tracking. I really love user session recording software, uh, mouse heat map generating software like Mouselow in Speclet. I love Hotjar. Um, form analysis tools, you can do targeted mini service. And all those things will help you to see what, how users interact with your web page. You can ask them for feedback and that will give you great ideas. Eye tracking, everybody knows eye tracking, very good word, it tracks the eye. Woo. This um, was the website of Suzuki, um, it's completely changed now, but I was pretty proud of this website because I made it. Um, and we did user testing and everything went well. People really found what they were looking for and they really liked these, uh, uh, the bullet list over there. But there was one problem. <laughs> they didn't see the call to actions, which I placed in the right hand corner. This is a request for quote and it's booking a test drive. And when doing the eye tracking, we noticed that all attention was in this area, which was pretty logical. So we had moved the buttons from there to <laughs> the social share fucking buttons. <laughs> I don't know, is Suzuki, is it a big brand in Poland? 
it's, it's never. Eh? Would you ever share a Suzuki car on your Facebook? <laughs> no. The most popular Suzuki car is a Suzuki Swift in Belgium, and it had six shares in one year. So it was easy to dump those buttons, put the call to actions in that area, and it saw an increase of 46% people asking for a quote and booking a test drive. So yes, my first tip is not woohoo, very innovative, but very important. Put your call to action where the users see them. Smart tip from Belgium. <laughs> Good. I haven't slept a lot the last night, so. Things I really love, sushi, sushi, no, sushi I love too. User session recording software and mouse heat maps. These are samples taken from Hotjar. Red areas everybody's looking at, the colder it gets, the less people looks at it. In this case, it's okay, 50% of the people made it to the end of the page. These are clicking heat maps, okay, most people click on the call to actions, that's good, but also people clicking on things I don't want them to click, so uh, we can do some work. But this give you, these kind of tools give you a very good insight what users do, and I like it more than digging into Google Analytics. This is a page of Inutech, it's a, German manufacturer of doors and windows. And when we used uh, the heat mapping uh, software, it was okay. People scrolled. I was happy. This, I think this is the page fault on most screens. So people scrolled and then nothing happened. Why? Because there's nothing to do over here. That's a solid, that's a mistake that's made on so many web pages. The call to actions mostly are above the fold, but there's nothing at the end. So we just repeated the call to actions. <laughs> at the bottom of the page. <laughs> but it's see, this this is incredible. How many pages don't have a call to action at the end of the page? And that's the easiest thing to do because when a user starts to scroll, he's more and more likely to be interested in what you're telling slash selling. So the only thing you have to do is just at the end of the page, lure him in like a fish, like a bait. So just do it. Repeat your call to action at the bottom of your page. It always works. This one, ah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Same page, big, beautiful picture. But we see the problem with a big picture, the content is moved down. So what we did, weep, <laughs> make it smaller, content is coming up, and we now have 27 to 46% more people clicking on those buttons. We have 12% more people clicking on one of those products, and even those Buttons at the bottom of the page saw an increase of 6%. It doesn't always work, but you should be careful when using a big header, big photos on top of your page. Sometimes uh, they push away your real message. Ten minutes left. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> this is a page from Barco. I think every movie theater in the world is equipped with Barco project projectors. This is a, a new tool they have called ClickShare. It allows people in board meet in meeting rooms to easily share their screen on a wireless projector. It's a long page. It doesn't matter if it's long or not. But when we digged into the Google Analytics and the heat mapping software, we noticed that, uh-oh, nobody scrolled. 50% of the people saw this page and like, like, nah, and they were gone. <laughs> So this was uh, the top of the page, terrible copywriting, a wireless presentation system for wireless collaboration and a wireless presentation collaboration system. <laughs> hey, what, please do share it on every network possible. Yeah, that's what people do when they want a, a solution for their meeting room and then we have the sexy product shot. <laughs> Fuck off. So we made some small changes, but really small changes to that page. We just said, what are the main um, 
positive points about it. No installation, no technical hiccups, no mess with cables. And they, we found a video on their website, so we just put a video there. It's a one minute video. And the result of this was a pretty incredible. We now have 32% more people starting to scroll. And that's something we always notice. When people start scrolling, they will continue scrolling. So at the end of the page, we now have 44% more people reading that part and 100% more people going to one of those two product detail pages. 76% more <laughs> requests for quotes and also 50 blah blah percent more brochure downloads. Just make sure that people want to scroll. Use your software to find where the problem areas are and then use your brain and your common sense to make your page better. Ah, form analysis, like Formissima, a great tool. This is a um, Suzuki request for quote on the new website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it could be longer. <laughs> Should be scientifically possible to make it longer. But we installed Formissimo, and uh, after two or three days, we got results. Woo! The mic is flowing away. We got results, and what we noticed is that um, there were two big problem fields. One was the dealer finder. We have a lot of drop-offs and a lot of people making corrections in that field. And then there was the package that is choose your option pack with your car. That was the field that half of the people just left the page. But that, those insights, if you, if you don't have them, you should, you're just guessing. Now we could change the form, make it of course shorter, but also make the dealer locator field much better. And that's our raise of 53% more people asking a, a quote. Make forms as easy as possible. Another thing we learned from Fermissimo is that um, some of the fields took users more time than we expected. There was clearly some hesitation when they needed to give their street address, their email address, and their phone number. And what we did was also a little fine tuning. We just added a little explanation with those fields why we were asking that information. We need your street so we can find your deal, the nearest dealer. We need your email address because otherwise we can't send you our proposal. Duh. And we need your phone number and we will only call you when we need some more information uh, to finalize your offer. Those small changes resulted in 35% more people filling in the form. Yes. Last thing, targeted surveys. I love it. <laughs> Not service where you have one out of 16,000 pages, like, uh, no, I don't. But a survey, just one question. You can do it with Qualaroo, you can do it with Hotjar, you can make it yourself. This is a web shop selling kids' furniture, um, rooms, beds, uh, mattresses, and so on. And this guy, oh my god, he had a slideshow on his homepage, a carousel <laughs> with 11 slides. I think that was the maximum amount that was allowed in his content management system, otherwise there would be 50 or so. Like, oh, that's good. It moves. It's made my website more dynamic. No, it sucks big time. So, and there were individual products there, and we just asked the users of the visitors of this website just one simple question. <laughs> What is the purpose of your visit to our website today? And people answer things like, I'm looking for a new room for my teenager, I'm looking for a bed for my daughter, I'm looking for a mattress. They always used product categories and not individual products. So what we did on the home page, we did several tests, but this was the winner, the six most popular product categories instead of individual products. We now had a raise of 180% more people clicking in that area and 75% more sales from all the users, visitors that visited the home page. It may not always work, but most of the time product categories will do better than individual products. This is the Koenig, manufacturer of doors, windows and terraces. It's uh, related to the Inutech in uh, the UK and in Belgium. It's a manufacturer, so they don't sell the stuff themselves. Very nice. <laughs> do you sell ladies or do you sell windows, whatever? Um, 
Again, we asked people, what are you looking for on their website? And the top task number one was, where can I buy our stuff? Where is the nearest dealer? So instead of just a button pointing to the dealer locator, we integrated the dealer locator on the homepage itself. The race, 23 times more people using the dealer locator. Because that was top task number one. And that's something you always see. It's better to integrate the first step of an interaction than just putting a button pointing to a form on your uh, website. We didn't work. Oh yeah, we did a few <laughs> weeks ago for Volkswagen, but we didn't change their website. This is the <laughs> Belgian version of their website. And we were doing a user testing on our uh, car trade show. And there was even a couple arguing about the color of the car which is not the goal of this page, the colors of the car. So we asked people, besides the look of your car, what is the most important decision criteria when you buy a car? What are your most important decision criteria when you buy a car? Price, always number one. Horsepower, yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, ah, yeah. Reliability, yeah. Size, color, yeah. But that, that, those things that, that, that are the looks and yeah. Mileage, number of doors. That's a very important one. Most people know it in front if they want three doors, five doors, four doors, uh, hatchback and things like that. Huh? Most popular, yeah, but if you have an individual uh, car brand, maybe not. What we noticed when doing those things was price, fuel consumption, and carbon dioxide emission is in Belgium important, especially for 60% of the cars in Belgium are owned by uh, companies, and our taxes are related to carbon dioxide emissions. Um, so this is what we started with with Suzuki. It well, was okay. But what we also noticed, and that's probably typically for Suzuki, is that most people know if they want a hand-shifted or an automatic car, and they want, maybe that's also typical for Belgium, diesel or petrol. So we added those things. More information made the page a bit more ugly, but it resulted in 7.5% more people selecting a right car and an increase of that amount for people asking a quote. Hmm, okay. So make it as easy as possible for people to choose the right car on a product overview page. When you buy a used car, what is the most important criteria then? Sorry? Crashed or not, yeah. <laughs> How old is it, yeah? First year of uh, production or something? And mileage, yeah. This is, um, well, a website, used cars. Those things are here, but they're on the right-hand side. We, we read from the left to the right. So we just flipped these things. So now, the most important information is on the left-hand side. We saw an increase of 26% more people make a reservation. You can't buy a car, but you can make a reservation. So it works. It doesn't always work, but you should place what's most important for your user at the left-hand side of your page in the Western world. So, last example, this is a manufacturer of car parts. This was their landing page. It was like, nah, okay, uh, some photos, some uh, bullet list, uh, call to actions, fucking social share buttons. What is, oh yeah, let's share a car part on our Facebook. <clears throat> we placed a survey, we sent a survey and uh, to Everybody who bought a car part the last six months and also on the website, after people filled in the form for a request for a quote, we asked them two questions. What convinced you the most to ask a quote or what convinced you the most to buy a car part? And if there was something that made you hesitate, what was it? We got a good amount of quality information from that and we completely rewrote the whole page. Made a much longer page, but because now we know what people uh, what attracted them to the carport and what they hated about it, we could make a v v much better page. It resulted in 77% more people asking a quote. And that for me is what user research is about. Know what your end visitors, what your clients want, and yes, you will get filthy rich. 
or at least see some increase of your conversion rate.